Hello everyone, it's uh, Wednesday, March 8th, and I um, wanted to say hi, and I hope your first full week of Lent is going well. Today we have two events from two different calendars that are happening today in the world. The first is from the calendar of the saints. Today we celebrate St. John of God, um, who was, um, is the patron saint of hospitals and the sick. There are many saints that are patrons of hospitals and the sick, but this is one of them. He founded an order of helping and caring for the sick. Then in the secular calendar, um, there is another day being celebrated today, and that is uh, International uh, Day of Women, March 8th. And it's only in the recent years that I've come to understand what this event is about. And I always think the history of events and why they come to be reveal a lot about what the event is trying to celebrate. Well, the International Day of Women was um, is based on March 8th, 1917, when a group of Russian textile uh, workers uh, revolted against the Tsar and his government. And some historians believe that it was the beginning of the Russian Revolution, which in turn overthrew the Tsar, then it... Uh, brought forth the provisional government in Russia in 1917, which then led to the Bolshevik Re Revolution that led to Lenin coming to power and um, Russia becoming a communist uh, nation. In 1975, the United Nations adopted this as an international day to be commemorated uh, as the beginning of uh, the modern women's movement um, of celebrating the equality of women, and also bringing awareness to the world, uh, the plight that many women have within different parts of the world, uh, such as domestic abuse, such as sex slavery, such as um, many uh, attitudes and behaviors that still degrade and do not respect the equality and the dignity of women. Those would be things that the Catholic Church would also teach against and would say that that is not right. Uh, men and women are made in God's image and likeness. They are made equal. Are they made different? Yes, but they are made equal uh, in God's grace and dignity. In a certain sense, humanity only comes to know itself when we come to fully appreciate uh, men and women. Um, but I want to give a Catholic understanding of why we want to celebrate the equality and the dignity um, of women. And I want to go back to the book of Genesis. And when we go to the book of Genesis and after the fall, the Lord God says that there are some consequences to Adam and Eve falling in the garden and being disobedient. And here are the ones that I just want to read. First, he says to Eve... I will intensify the pangs of your childbearing. In pain shall you bring forth children. Yet your urge shall be for your husband, and he shall be your master. And then he says to Adam, Cursed be the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat its yield all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you as you eat of the plants of the field. By the sweat of the face of your face shall you get bread to eat until return to the ground from which you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So those are the consequences of original sin. But I think many times we have forgotten this second consequence of sin to Eve. We know about labor, childbearing, the difficulty of that. But then there's this phrase, Yet your urge shall be for your husband, and he shall be your master. Before the fall, Adam was not the master of Eve. Adam and Eve were equal, and they were helpmates to one another. They were in perfect communion. That's why they could be naked without shame. And then they were in communion with God. And sin disrupted that and deeply wounded the trust between human beings and the trust between men and women. And this original sin, the consequence of it, 
led to mentalities that men owned women or could control women or could disrespect women in ways that God never intended. I think what the church would celebrate is, is that through Christ, Christ has ended the cycle of violence by his cross. And when we take on the revolution of tenderness and forgiveness and seeing the world as God sees the world, that's when we get to appreciate the dignity of every single human person, and especially women. Um, I really think that's kind of a, um, a humble attempt to offer a um, Catholic response or a Catholic belief about the International Day of Women. Um, God's revolution of love and forgiveness was not brought by violence and revenge and exacting punishment for past failures of others. Rather, God, in his Son, took on all the garbage of our humanity, absorbed it, and then on the third day rose victorious over sin and death and began a new creation. In a certain sense, the tomb is the new Garden of Eden, where humanity is in friendship with God. That's, that, that's a different starting point that I think is very important that can lead to looking at issues differently. So it's not only through the lens of equality that the church is against domestic violence and against sex slavery and against uh, the mistreatment and uh, the, the acts and the attitudes and the actions of inequality towards women. That's not the only motivation that, that equality is the one criterion. But rather, we believe that through the cross, that God has restored us to looking at our relationships with one another in the proper context again. That in a certain way, men will never discover their potential unless they love and they honor women as their equal. That in a certain sense, in their relationship with women, it brings out something that men possess but needs to be untapped by the encounter and friendship and love for women. And the same is for women, that in a certain sense they become complete in their love and friendship with men when they are treated as they ought to be treated. Um, so that's just a brief comment. So um, I saw a lot about that on social media and um, it's something that I've learned recently as I look at the book of Genesis and I just wanted to share that with you. So let's, let's pray for the healing and the renewal of relationships between men and women. Let us pray for men to have a deep and abiding respect for women, to honor them. And then two, that women may also honor and respect men um, in the sense of in the sense of that there is a friendship and an equality a listening to. Um, anyway, uh, th I'm trying to say it as best I can, um, but I wanted just to share those thoughts with you. So let's pray for the renewal of the relationships between men and women. Let's pray for the protection of women from all things that are unjust and immoral. Um, and let us uh, pray... Uh, for the renewal of family life, um, that unconditional love may be experienced in every family, which will lead to lasting respect for all people, especially the most vulnerable in our society. So God bless and uh, have a great day of Lent. Bye-bye.